everyone. I wanted to introduce you to a fun sock knit along that I wanted to get started with uh, this December. Now, you may be watching these after the fact and it's not gonna be December, but you should still have just as much fun with them. I really like knitting socks. Um, I often kind of tend to veer towards my old favorites because sock knitting for me is more often than not what I end up pulling out or what I go ahead and do when I don't want to think too much about my knitting. So I go back to my old favorites. Also with socks, because they're quite small, even if your gauge varies a little bit, obviously not too much, but like if it's, you know, you don't have to fuss quite too much on your gauge and stuff like that, because there's usually other recipients. I find that if I've got a yarn that is a little bit thicker than I realized it was, and the sock got bigger than it's going to fit for me, I have lots of people that really love hand knitted socks. Now I should also say, you may never have knit a sock for yourself and you may in fact go like why in God's name would I go and knit a sock for myself when I can go to the shop or store and buy a stack of them for five or ten euros. But I think that if you knit their, your first sock for yourself you're never going to go back. They're really comfortable and they're really warm. The, the only addendum I would put to that is that I think that you do have to be aware that they're slightly thicker than standard socks. Like if you're used to wearing sports or cotton socks, they're going to be quite thin. So these are going to be fractionally thicker. So they're great for boots or shoes that have got a little bit of room, but you're not going to use any very close fitting shoes for it. And in fact, I know sometimes people get fall so much in love with hand knitted socks that they end up buying shoes specifically to fit them. So do be aware that it's probably something that can come a bit of an addiction if you, <laughs> if, if you haven't knit socks before. So what we're going to do in the knit along is this is going to be a fairly self-guided knit along, but I'm trying to start off with a lot of information so that you can go ahead and make your choices. I'm not going to put a very specific pattern up. What I will have is I'm going to put a little recipe for a basic unpatterned sock or the one that I'm going to knit through as well where I'm just going to have one little uh, set of patterns around the cuff. But I'll also detail different types of sock construction so that if you opt to go change, you can still use the basic number of stitches and things like that, but you can adjust it to, to work it the way you want to. Let's take a look at the different types of sock construction that you have now. A bit like uh, with any kind of garments, you can do them either cuff down or toe up. So it's, there's going to be slight variations in the techniques depending on which, uh, which direction you're going in. If I'm looking for a very relaxing knit, generally I will go for cuff down. And the reason for that is that's how I learned. I like the way the sock fits and I've done it so many times that I really don't ever have to think about it. If I want to kind of have a little bit more fun with it, I'll often do toe up because it means that I, I'm more engaged in the process and it's a little bit more thinky for me, if that makes sense. So if you've never done socks before, take your pick because they're all new to you um, and you'll probably have to think a little bit through as you're going through. But like the magic of socks for the first time is that it is just incredible watching your angle of your work move from this direction to this direction or vice versa that it feels a little bit like magic you know so the first sock we're looking at here this is one from a book called knitting with rainbows and the sock is called galabi it's also an individual pattern but i'm just going to show you what it looks like for a top-down fairly traditional um, construction so we we'll start in the round at the cuff and you knit the leg down to this part here then at that point, you just take the heel stitches and you knit back and forth in rows. Now, when you're knitting back and forth in rows on the heel, you'll usually introduce what's known as a slip stitch pattern. And the reason for that is it makes it much thicker and denser the fabric because the heel obviously gets a lot of abuse. So by adding extra fabric there, you're going to go ahead and give it a little bit more cushioning and make it a bit more durable. So once that's done, you'll then come back in the round by picking up stitches on each side of that heel flap, joining in the round, 
and then decreasing down along here. And this creates this little triangle here, which is called a gusset. And that gusset has a huge advantage because this part here of your foot is your instep. And it's usually fairly wide on most people. If you've got a flatter foot, your instep is going to be lower. Another reason I like this construction type is that you do have a decent sized gusset and I've got a very high instep. So if I have a sock construction with no gusset, I will effectively not be able to get it over my foot. It just won't pull over the instep. So this gusset for me is really important. Then when I finish decreasing, you begin working in the round again. You may also notice here that what you're decreasing down to is the same number of stitches as you had for your cuff. So the cuff and the foot circumference is going to be the same size. Now, that's assuming you have what, you know, a bit like any other part of the body when you're, construct, when you're doing your own knitting, there's certain assumptions made. If that's not the case for your foot, if your cuff, if your, if your calf is much wider or much narrower than the lower circumference of your foot, then what you can do is you can either work more or less decreases at that gusset and make this part of the foot the size that you want. Or what you might find is you might have assumed a gauge for knitting the cuff and realized it was a little off and so that you need more or less stitches down here. So you can make that adjustment in the gusset. So it gives you a lot of freedom, I think, to really help shape it as you're going along. So then what you're gonna do is you keep knitting in the round with or without a stitch pattern all the way up to this point here, just before the toes. It's usually around about two inches, somewhere between one and a half inches and two inches for those decreases. And you're decreasing here and here, and the same on the other side. You come down to the last few stitches and you graft those together. And so that is your traditional cuff down uh, sock construction. Now we come over here, and this one is called Aranel. And this one is from Short Road Knits. And this uses a couple of different techniques. First of all, it starts at the toe. And secondly, instead of having um, a heel flap here, it's got short rows and the same for the toe. So you start this by beginning with all of those stitches across here. Then you work short rows to shape up here, short rows to shape the other side. And at that point, you take that, you, you would start with a provisional cast on, undo it, and you begin working all the way back up to here. Now, with more traditional short row heels, you just immediately beginning working short rows here and short rows here to form a little, um, a little square of short rows. I, however, because I do like my gussets, I introduce a little modification where I begin adding increases here before the short rows and decreases afterwards. So you still end up with this little gusset here, which allows me to wear something with short rows, because if that wasn't added, the sock is just not going to fit me. And then at that point, you just work in the round from this point up. One big advantage of working like this is that you can actually, you can get, I think, a slightly better fit at the length because you can you more easily tell exactly where you're going to go with your uh, short row. And also, if you, I've got a really nice yarn and you want to use all of it and you'd like a long sock, you can keep going um, until you've finished off half of your yarn up to this point. So that is one big advantage of toe up, I find, is that um, you, can make, you can more easily make use of your yarn. Whereas if you're doing cuff down, you don't know how, you have to have the right length for this. So you can't keep going with this. So you have to kind of make a guesstimate as to how much yarn you're going to need um, by as you're working down the cuff. So it's not going to be as easy to extend it with, with that particular type. This one here is uh, the same construction as this. This one is, I'll turn it this way because it looks more attractive. Um, this one is Tallium. Again, it's got the very same construction as Arinal with a short row toe, worked up to this point, added that little gusset with increases and then short row heel working around here and up to that point. You can also, I don't have an example of it here, but you can also do cuff down and do the exact same type of heel where you work increases down here, short row heel across here, and then decreases down there. So if you really don't like the heel flap construction, just pop in that short rows instead. But unless you've got a low instep, I would definitely suggest putting a gusset in. 
So those are the different types of construction types. So the next thing we're going to look at is yarns. I've got a couple of yarns here. This one is Dublin Dye Sock Yarn, and I've got a whole pile of socks, yeah, yarn over here. And what you'll probably notice with most sock yarns that are designed specifically for socks, they usually will have a certain percentage of nylon. Generally, like 20 to 25% would be pretty typical. And you can probably guess why it is for durability. Socks get a huge amount of wear and tear. And because they tend to get fairly grubby, you also, you're more likely to actually, I think, be a little bit more abusive with their washing. So you might need to wash them a bit more aggressively than you would a sweater or a scarf or a shawl or something. So they need to be really durable. So that's usually why you're going to have a percentage of nylon. As well as that, when you take a look at how their construction constructed the yarn, it tends to have a much tighter twist. Same thing, more durable. When you've got a tight twist on your yarn, the fibers aren't going to rub against each other as much. So you're go it's, not going to, it's not going to pill or felt and things like that. Because that's a real danger at the heel. If you've got like a shoe sliding in and out um, or sliding up and down across the sock, you can sometimes, if you've got a softer sock yarn, you could get some felting around that area. In terms of durability as well, that's also why you tend to knit them in a tight gauge. Because if you kind of look at this, you can see the stitches are very small and the knitting is quite tight. And that's really important with sock knitting is you want small needles, tight, tight gauge, so that you've got as little friction between the stitches as possible. Now with one, and also in terms of um, a fairly typical sock yarn, this one here has like 420 meters. So in yardages, that's a little bit more, per, it's per 100 meters. And this will comfortably get you a good size um, pair of socks. These socks yeah, here have got their 50 grams, which big advantage of 50 grams is that you can play with color work. So if you want to have two color socks, it means that you only need two skeins of the yarn here. So this one you're talking about for the 50 grams, it's 212 meters. So it's almost identical to this because it's half of that. And in yards, that's 231. So over 100 grams, that's going to be 461 yards. So I have picked these two here to be my colors. And I'm going to, I haven't actually done socks with color work before. So I'm going to, for my sock, what I'm going to pick and what the recipe I'll put up is a cuff down, basic heel flap, but I'm going to do a little zigzag uh, cuff pattern around with these two colors. Now, because you need most of one skein for one versus the other, I'm probably going to have mismatched socks. So I'm going to have it where this is the main color in one, and this will be the main color on the other. So that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm aiming towards. I'll, in, in a minute and in the blog post, I'll post up, um, I'll show you the actual uh, graph that I'm working with and how we're gonna have a look at the gauge and things like that. Next thing we're gonna have a quick look at is our needles. Obviously it's worked in the round, the most traditional way of doing that would be double pointed needles. I've never been an enormous fan of double pointed needles. So my go-to is usually really long circular needle and magic loop. Sometimes people I know will knit two at a time with magic loop. I have never really gotten into that, but if that's your thing, go for it. It just means that, you know, you knit both sides of each, turn it around, knit both sides on the other side. You're going to have two skeins of yarn going at the same time, which for me isn't a great thing because I, I tend to have a lot of animals around me when I'm knitting. And so trying to keep two separate is a bit of a mess. Um, what I might attempt this time is these little ones are called flyers. They're like a variant on double pointed needle because they've got tiny little wire between. And so you have half of the stitches on each side and then you're knitting the third with this. So I might give this a go this time. And if it doesn't work out, I'll revert back to my, <laughs> to my good old trusty magic loop. Um, and in terms of size of needle, usually um, I'm, I'm a, a loose-ish knitter. So I tend to veer down a size. For this on the socks, yeah, they recommend um, a two and a quarter, where is it? Um, uh, they recommended, a, I think it's two and a quarter inch needle. There we go, two, a 2.25 millimeter needle. 
so I'll probably start in that size. I might drop down to a two millimeter because I really, with socks, I tend to just be a little bit looser. And so that way I should be closer to the gauge. The gauge here is nine stitches per inch, which would be a fairly typical sock gauge. So I'm going to work on that assumption. As we're going through, we can double check. And if it changes, then we can come back and make the adjustment from the cuff to the foot, like I had said. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at measuring our feet and figuring out our sock sizes. So we're going to go and measure our foot size now. So you're going to need a measuring tape. And I find it useful to have just a strip of cardboard of some sort or a sheet of paper or something like that that you can just draw on. So what we're going to start with, first of all, is let me try and uh, do a little contortion here. Across the ball of your foot, you're just going to measure around the ball of the foot, all right? And that is going to give you an idea of what the circumference is. So from there, I'm going to put up a little formula which will let you figure out how many stitches you're going to need for your gauge. Again, I'm assuming that I have nine stitches per inch, and so my gauge is going to come from that. And then the other thing you're going to want to know is how long your foot is. So we're going to take a little close up now so that we can see how you measure the length of your foot. I'm now going to measure the length of my foot. I've just put my heel at the back of the cardboard and my toe at the front. And you can see I've drawn a line where the top of my big toe goes. And then I'll just go measure the length where you can see it's nine and a half inches long. So that lets me know how long it's going to have to be from the heel to the top of the toe. All right, now the time has come to actually figure out our stitch count and our sizes. So what we're going to do now is, well, I want you, while I'm doing this, I want you to do it for yourself too, is go ahead, measure your feet, figure out the actual, the length of your foot and, your, and, uh, and how, how long and what size you're going to have to knit for yourself. And then come take a look at the calculations I'm doing here so that you, get, you can figure out how you're going to get these fit right for yourself and also work out with any stitch patterns that you're going to add in. I'm now going to take my assumed gauge and my foot size and figure out what finished size that I want to, to make or how many stitches I want. So I measured eight and a half inches as the circumference around the ball of my foot. But when you're making socks, you actually want, in order for them to fit, you want a bit of negative ease. So I'm going to take one away from that. So 8.5 minus one is 7.5. I'm, for the moment, going to work on the assumption that um, that I'm going to end up close to the ball band gauge, which is assuming nine. To get that, I'm actually going to drop down to a two millimeter needle because I know that I tend to be on the loose side, but I want my sock gauge nice and tight. So I'm going to try and stick with that. So I'm going to multiply 7.5 by nine, which gives me 67.5. Now, originally I said, oh, okay, let's get a multiple of two for my ribbing because I'm going to do a, a knit one, knit a purl one through back loop back loop, <laughs> TBL. Um, so I just need a multiple of two. So I said 68 would be fine. But then what I didn't take into consideration is I'm going to start off with my cuff, I'm going to have my ribbing with the, the twisted, hang on, I've got this wrong. It's purl one, knit one through back loop. I will have all of this written as well. It's just writing on the fly can be dangerous. And then I'm going to work down and work just a little bit in a single color. And then I was going to introduce a zigzag color work pattern. So over here, this is the color work pattern that I've drawn up. You can see it's going to be, I've been knitting this way and the repeat that I've got is six stitches. So I'm going to change this a little and bring it to 66 rather than 68 because I'll have a multiple of six then. So that's where I'm going to start with is 66 stitches but I will keep an eye on my gauge to make sure it's correct. So what I'm going to work on now is I'm going to knit or cast on loosely. You want to, if you aren't a, a loose, if you aren't good at casting on loosely, I'll add a few suggestions for some nice stretchy cast ons there. Um, and then I'm going to work that twisted rib, one by one twisted rib for probably 
two inches or if you're centimeters five centimeters then I'll do about one inch just straight in a single color I might also actually what I'm going to do I think is start with this color then <laughs> just for the rib then move to this one and then start striping between the <laughs> on the second sock I'll alternate back and then I'm going to come back here and work to the length of cuff I want um, like anything from kind of like six to eight inches overall probably be typ pretty typical but try it on and see what you like um, also take a look at um, how much yarn you've got if you've got a little on the lower amount of yarn or you're knitting a very long foot you might want to be careful with your cuff so now that we've done that you're all ready to get started with the rest of your sock all right now we have gotten all of our measurements done so now I want you all to get started with your knitting at home pick your yarn find your needles measure your feet and get started so next week come back to me and I want you to have finished down to the end of your leg length by the time we are getting started and next week we're going to take a look at heels and I'll show you how to do the heel flap and I will show you how the um, what a short row heel looks like and it'll be fun